You are going to love sculpting these cute little elf figures. There is absolutely no complicated sculpting of faces, hands, or feet. It's all simple shapes put together into this really adorable package. And speaking of packages, the elves are both holding packages that actually open and you could put a gift inside. What a fun idea. Hi there, Sandy here. Welcome to another Christmas polymer clay video at KeepsakeCrafts.net. When making your little elf, you can make him or her in any colors that you want. The first one I did was in traditional Christmas colors. I used Sculpey Souffle in Cherry Pie, Jade, and Igloo. And also, it's nice to add in another color that just kind of gives it a bit of a pop, a little brightness. So I used Primo Wasabi that and I really like the way those look together. I decided for the next one to do a little bit more non-traditional colors and so I pulled out Sculpey Souffle in Royalty, Turnip, and Robin's Egg. For an accent I chose Mai Tai. So for the accent colors both times I just chose something that was went well, contrasted nicely, and was a little bit bright. So to make our bodies, we're going to take some aluminum foil. I have here about a 6 inch wide by 12 inch piece and just crumple it up into a ball. You'll end up with about a 1 inch ball and make it as nice and round and smooth as you can. The, uh, the smoother and more round you make it, the easier it is to cover smoothly. And we want to do this instead of using solid clay because if you have a piece of clay that is this big, as big as his head, it's very thick and you end up with cracking problems and then you have to bake it a long, long time in which it ends up with darkening problems. So it's better just to have a ball of foil or something in the middle to help conserve your clay and make sure you don't have any cracking problems. And you're going to make two of these, one for the body and one for the head. I decided that my colors were just a little bit dark and I lightened them up a little. I added three parts of the royalty to one part white to get just this lighter purple. I did the same with the turnip to get just a lighter pink because they often darken in the oven and these were just a little dark to begin with. And I added, I think maybe one part white to four or five parts of this robin's egg just to tone it down a little bit. By the way, you'll need about an entire block of clay for the color that you want for the pants and the hat and half of the stripy legs. Then for the shoes and the shirt and the sleeves, you'll need about a half a block. You'll need half a block for the other half of the legs as well as other accenty bits and then scraps for other things. So we're going to start by making our legs. Now the first ones I did were these candy cane legs and they drove me crazy because red is one of the strongest colors of clay. It was very difficult to keep the red off of the white. It was difficult to keep the white clean. So this time I'm using a fairly low contrast mix for the legs. But if you have trouble with the red and the white, 91% rubbing alcohol is your friend. You can just put that on put, on, put it on with a little brush, wipe it off, and get yourself some nice clean white clay. So take half of your mix that you're going to use for the pants and the hat and half the legs and roll that into a smooth ball without any creases. Pull off a little bit of this in case you want to use it for something else. And then do the same with the second color. In my first figure this would have been red and this would have been the white. And really the only other place I used the white I think was on the pom-pom for his hat. Mostly because the white was driving me crazy, getting all dirty. <laughs> Once your balls are nice and smooth without any creases, go ahead and roll them into about one half inch thick logs. I hope that you uh, enjoy this tutorial. This was a lot of fun to make for all of you. And if you've been inspired by my videos, if you enjoy them, I hope that you might consider becoming a patron. Not only do you get the satisfaction of knowing that you are keeping these tutorials coming for everybody, but you also get rewards. My patrons get access to my patron-only feed where I share bonus videos, templates, sneak peeks, behind the scenes. And I often send presents to my patrons as well, just as a way of saying thank you. 
And patrons who support me at the $5 level and $10 levels get one and two bonus tutorials every month. So once you have your two logs, go ahead and just flatten them out a little. This just makes it easier to get started on our twisty bit. Put them on top of each other and now roll these into a round. And it's at this point when you have all the rolling done so that this line between the two colors is smooth. Again, if you're using colors with a high contrast, this is the point when you want to take your alcohol, put it in a little dish, get a brush, wipe it down with the brush, and then wipe it off with a clean paper towel. And if you're using red and white, the red will which is like will be this pinky haze on the white will actually come off. Also make sure to clean off your tile. Clean off your hands. Try to touch it on the red part and not the white part because astoundingly this clay will get into your fingerprints and then come off later when you're conditioning clay. It's really amazing <laughs> how persistent especially the red color is. So once we have that now you can start twisting. Just hold it on one end and twist your hands in opposite directions. Don't let it get too rough before you go ahead and kind of smooth it out because it'll get lumpy and bumpy. And I don't think his legs ought to be lumpy. Oh, that's cute. I like that. So you keep twisting uh, as much as you want so you can have as tight or as as wide or as narrow stripes as you want. To really smooth everything out, I like to use one of these, an acrylic block. This is for rubber stamping. But this does a great job of just smoothing all of that out. Go ahead and cut that right in half. These should end up being about a half an inch or a little bit thicker. So we'll set these aside for a moment while we make the body. For that, you're going to take your remaining purple clay or red clay or whatever color you've decided for the pants and cover the ball with that and then at one end you can go ahead and let it overlap a little and be a little thicker let's take off the excess try not to trap air bubbles in there and then roll this into a smooth ball now I can sort of feel the end where that extra bit is and that is what I want to roll up into more of an egg shape. So once you're happy with how smooth that is, take a look at your legs again. I think these legs look a little thick for that body. And so I'm just going to take my acrylic roller and roll them down closer to a half of an inch thick. I'm using my fingers to gently round this and this will be underneath but if somebody were to pick up the figurine and look at the bottom they would see it so I like to make it neat it doesn't have to be perfectly finished but at least a little tidy looking put those together and just kind of use your thumb to squash those down and then make that kind of neat And now you can put the body on there. There's one part that maybe looks a little better or a little smoother. You can put that in the front. Okay, cool. And now you can trim your legs. I trimmed mine so they're just under an inch and a half from the front of the belly. So about one and three eighths here. Just do what looks right and proportional to your figure. I'm gonna thin this end just a little to sort of make an ankle. It just looks a little better to have it get be slightly tapered here. Although do make that flat. And these you can use for another pair of legs or something else. I am just going to take my blade and shave off that part that kind of caved in as I was pinching it so that we can stick the shoes on nice and neatly. Next I'm going to take my blade and trim off some of the top of this because these are his this this shape will actually rep, it actually represents his pants and his shirt 
So we need to cut off some. Here's a look at what we've got so far. I am going to take my blade and cut off about a third, right about at that line. Cut off that top of the cone. And if the shape distorts when you do this, that's okay, we can fix it. And uh, some of the, the foil may actually be in the way, and that's okay, we'll just cut around it. Fix your shape if you need to, and then this cut edge, you just want to take your fingers and softly round it. Now the color I'm using for the shirt and the shoes is a much lighter color, so I'm going to get out a baby wipe and wipe my hands down as best I can before handling this lighter blue. Take about half of that color that you mixed and roll it into a ball. Then you're going to cut off somewhere around a third to half of this. I think in this case probably close to half. It really depends on where you cut this piece and how big it ended up. And then just kind of test it on there and see if that'll work. And I think that'll be just about right. So you kind of want to reshape that into round because it probably got distorted when you cut it. And I'm also using my fingers to soften this cut edge, rolling it under. And then I'm going to pinch and squeeze and try to kind of get a little bit more of a point up here. Basically get it back to the shape that we started with for the body. More of a bit of a cone, like that. And let's see, I think that needs to be wider. So I'll just try to match up the two shapes. So they so basically will make one smooth teardrop a little bit pointier than it, than your average egg. Now I have chickens and we actually get some really pointy shaped eggs. It's funny how they'll come out. These all, all these different shapes that you don't usually see in the grocery store. And there. So it kind of looks like he's got a shirt tucked into his pants. Take my remaining blue clay, cut that in half. Roll that into whatever shape you need so that you can cut that pretty evenly in half. And as always, roll it into a ball. So the shoes get rolled into a nice long pointy teardrop. And I suggest you do both of them at once. Don't finish one shoe and then go back and make the other because it can be hard to get them the same size. It's actually at this point that you really can compare and see if you've got equal amounts of clay. Once you have both of your long pointy teardrops, just go ahead and flatten. Maybe three quarters of an inch to an inch around that bottom end. Hopefully you see where I'm going with this. Put them side by side, lined up, and that makes it easy to do this next detail, which is kind of fun. Place your clay blade, oh, maybe a little under half an inch from the rounded end, which is, of course, the heel end of the shoes. Press it down, not quite halfway, and then bend it forward. And you have just created little heels. Isn't that cute? This is why I wanted this to be flat. I'm going to actually have a tiny bit of the heel of the shoe sticking out. So you just place those on there like that. Just like that. And then this part is fun. You just take those little pointy ends. And curl them up. <laughs> That's funny, these have much bigger curls than the other pair. It's funny how they all come out a little different, even though you're trying to do the same thing. <laughs> so there's the shoes. Aren't they fun? 
Those are cute. <laughs> One more detail before we give this its first bake, and that's to add some, actually a couple more details, but add some suspenders and buttons. I have a sheet of my Royalty Purple Pants Clay rolled out on a medium setting, about a five in the in an, on an atlas, just a medium setting. And I'm going to use my blade to cut a couple of nice straight strips, somewhere around a quarter of an inch thick. If you'd like these ends to be a little rounded, which I think looks nicer, one thing you can do is take a cutter. This I think is like a half inch just under half an inch cutter. Just tilt it at an angle so that you could just cut that little roundy bit. Place them on like suspenders. Let's see if I can tilt this up for you so you can see what I'm doing. So it'll overlap the uh, pants by a little bit and go around the back over what would be the shoulders. And then, oh look at that, it did that for me. Crisscross it around the back. And then I'm going to put my finger under there and use the cutter so that that's cut off, rounded again. Oops, I was afraid of that. If you're doing it, you won't be picking it up so that somebody on camera can see it, so pieces won't be falling off, but I'm trying to get hold it so that you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just gonna use some of this blue and roll like a little eighth inch ball, cut that in half, roll those into balls for buttons. Now you could just put on flat buttons, but I happen to have this stamp. It's a leather stamp. I'll have a link to it in my blog post. And it makes the cutest little buttons when you press into it. Just like that. Isn't that adorable? Ah, I like it. Now for the more traditional red and green elf, I made his buttons gold. I just dusted them with some Perfect Pearls and Perfect Gold. You can leave your buttons as is but I'm going to just dust them with a little bit of mica powder. I'm going to be using the color Perfect Pearl. Oh, that's pretty. And then use whatever tool works for you. I found a craft knife is great. Just slide under it, pick them up, and pop them right in place. Just that little bit of pearly shimmer, but with the glue, blue clay matches. Let's see if I can get that shape back. Here we go. That's probably the smarter way to do it would be to roll the balls, dust them with mica powder, and then press them on with this. Let me see. All right, I'm going to add two more balls, and we'll see if that works better. So flatten them slightly, because I don't want the mica powder getting underneath, because then they won't stick. If you don't have the stamp, you can just put them on like that and use a needle tool to poke a couple little holes so they look like buttons. Let's see, so now that that's on there. That's pretty good too. I think that's much neater. She is ready for the first baking, except for one thing. We want to make sure when we put her head on that it doesn't fall off. No heads falling off at elves. So grab a toothpick, jam it straight down through the aluminum foil ball, and now go ahead and bake this. I baked mine for an hour because there's, there's some fairly thick areas. The legs are a half inch thick, so that would warrant an hour right there. So here's our little figure's body and legs and feet out of the oven. I had to laugh when I went and compared the uh, these feet with these. Uh, it's funny how different they are, but these are cute too. So sometimes it's fun to just try different variations on things. Obviously I used a lot more clay on these and made the heels smaller. That's kind of funny. They're kind of goofy looking. I like them. So what you want to do now is grab a pair of pliers and trim that toothpick so it is only about half an inch sticking out. 
then go ahead and pull it out and put it back in point up. This will make it much easier for inserting and supporting the head. The next step is to add the head. So you're going to take your flesh color clay, pull off a bit for the nose. This guy got a fairly big nose. You can make them bigger, you can make them longer, you can make little teeny weeny nose, whatever you like, but just pull off more than you think you're going to need for the nose because the rest is going onto the head. And I just realized I'm not actually rolling this into a ball. I'm wrapping it around the second clay core. And I'm just going to tr try to wrap it evenly this time. So when you wrap, I know there are people who do this much more neatly than me. When you see it overlapping, I just kind of tear it off. pinching it around, trying, like I said on the other one also, not to incorporate air bubbles. And once you get one layer, take the rest of your clay. This is about an ounce of clay for the head and nose, or half a package if you're buying it that way. And this is um, this is Sculpey Living Doll, I believe, in Baby. It's not actually my favorite. I haven't found a favorite clay for sculpting doll colors. Be they just all seem so soft to me. They kind of make me crazy. They're so squishy, and they often have to be leached. But this will do for this particular project. So obviously, we got to make that nice and smooth. It's up to you. You can make your figure's head any shape you want. This guy's face is an oval, a little bit wider than it is tall, but you could actually make it going the other way. So you could have it taller than it is wide. You could have it perfectly round. You could have it egg shaped. So it's going to go like this. And then grab an awl and jam it down in there. It's okay if you come out the other end because it's going to be a hat. And that way you can just put this right onto that toothpick. Now, even though your figure is top heavy, you're not going to lose that head because of the support that is in there. By the way, I put this here to remind me, to remind you, that when you put your pieces in the oven, things like this, which are kind of heavy, Go ahead and just tuck some batting into it, gently into it. You'll be able to peel it off. It may be stuck on there when you take it out of the oven, but you'll be able to peel it off. But give it some support. This fella's leaning back a little, so I made sure when I put him in the second time with his big heavy head on top that I put a bunch of batting all around him. And the arms, I was a little concerned that they might slide off because they can't, went, went on last and I put batting all around him like this and had him like up against the foil container that he was baked in but then with the batting all around him like this and under it supporting his arms. Just because clay gets soft when it's in the oven and it's heating up, it gets soft and that is when it will slump. You could take some time and smooth out your head a little bit more. Of course you don't have to put it on straight, you can Put it on at a little bit of an angle. You can turn the head at an angle. So now I've got my piece for the nose, and I would say that is <laughs> way too good. Well, you know, you could use that, but I think I'm going to maybe give a slightly daintier nose. I kind of like the little oval nose, so I just rolled a little oval. And I'm just putting that there lightly to sort of get an idea of where I want it. And then we're going to make this exceedingly complex mouth. <laughs> no kidding. Get yourself a cutter. It can be any. It can be round. It can be oval. Anything you want. You might want to practice on some scrap clay and see if you like what you get. So I've got an idea of where the nose is going to go, which is just about halfway down the face. And I'm going to take my cutter and go below that and just tilt it at an angle and press. Oh, and that's a happy little smile. 
I have a needle tool which I like to just poke into the corners of the mouth because it makes these little dimples and now I can pop the nose on oh that's cute <laughs> that is adorable one of the things that made me think of this particular project was that I have been making figures sculptures this year in 2017 and I consider faces hands feet my worst enemies they're just so much work and when I saw this the simple little face that's so cute and it occurred to me I could put the hands in mittens put the feet in funky shoes and have all the fun of making an adorable little figure without all the trouble of <laughs> sculpting a complex face so that is something rewarding about that too so now what you're going to do is grab up all of your remaining purple or in his case red or any color you want but I just made his hat and his pants match but you don't have to but you the way I've measured it out for you is that the remaining half of that clay that you use for his pants and his legs will be his hat and one more time roll it into a smooth ball and this is kind of fun and very satisfying to do. So you're going to first roll this into a cone. Don't let the wide end get too narrow. You're going to make leave that fairly wide and we're going to widen that even further. But roll this out until it's pretty long. Just keep tapering it out because this is the part that we're going to curl and spiral around to make his jaunty little hat. So yeah, somewhere around, yeah, five inches long. Now this wide end, go ahead and just kind of press that onto your work surface to flatten it out a bit. And then start to go in there with your fingers and open it up. You can use a tool and all will help you get started. Just kind of crank around in there. I find sometimes fingernails on my, long nails on my thumbs can be a detriment because they kind of dig in instead of letting you get this smooth transition. This tool is also useful for just kind of going up in there and sort of rolling. Another tool that's useful for that, although I wish it was a little wider for this purpose, is this Christie Friesen tool because it's a nice smooth taper. And you kind of use it as a rolling pin on the inside, but I'm always watching this transition edge because what I want is a nice smooth taper. I don't want big stair steps there. And I'm also going to thin this edge down pretty thin because that's the edge that'll be around your figure's face. So you just keep working that. Here we go. See how it's smoothing out. And of course what you want is to be able to pop that on the head and have it come down almost to the nose. So that needs to be a little bit wider which I think will be just right because this needs to be a little thinner. So as I thin it out it'll get wider and up here it's starting to not be smooth so I'm just gonna roll that some more. So this takes a little bit of time but like I said it's very satisfying that you just went from a ball of clay to this great shape. And if you have rough spots just stroke your fingers consistently. The, uh, the fingerprints will make it leave a texture, but if you understand that and don't do this so that you're leaving fingerprints, but if you do this, then that's going to give you kind of a nice, almost satiny, smooth texture. So keep going until you're happy with the shape and the size. I like that. That's fun. Oh, oh! I kind of like the head tilted a little. Oh, that's cute. All right, I just want it to come down a little further so that it definitely looks like it's hiding the eyes. And 
And this wants to curl this way, so you know what? We'll let it. It does seem to want to go the other way. And that's just the way it wanted to curl, and so there we go. I'll put that there. I can put a little pom-pom there. Oh my goodness, that is just the cutest thing. The only thing remaining to be done is to add a little pom-pom. If you want to make it look fluffy, take your needle tool. I'm just going to hold it very lightly, mostly holding the bum in my hand because I don't want to wreck everything around the back. And just stab it repeatedly. This one is behaving much nicer, I must say, than the white. The white was giving me fits. It had all kinds of schmutz in it. When I tried rolling it into a ball, it pulled all the red out from my fingerprints and became pink and ugh, white clay. It's just, it's tough. But this one's cute, I like that. So now it's time to bake this, but let's do one more thing first. We need to get started on the present. Earlier you were looking at this fellow without his arms. The reason is that you kind of need to get the gift all done and made before you can add his arms so that you can get the gift perfectly positioned. You want to get the gift going and get that baking because that actually bakes in three steps. This is where your accent color comes in. I'm going to use this. That'll be really pretty. You need some kind of form. This is just a piece of wood. I, you know, somewhere I have blocks of wood that my husband cut for me ages ago that I had in mind I wanted to use. They've been in the same place for I don't know how long. I reorganized maybe a couple months ago and now I have no idea where they are. So annoying. <laughs> but all that to say, find yourself a block of wood. This I found in my husband's scrap pile and lop lopped off just a small section and that's just a perfect size gift. You'll want to cover this smoothly with a little bit of aluminum foil. So as you're covering it, think of covering a present that you would cover smoothly. Rather than crinkling it around, I'm going to get the bottom and two sides and smooth it and then I'm kind of going to tuck in these edges. Just like if you were wrapping a present and trying to make them smooth corners may not be perfect and what shows from what texture shows from the foil will be on the inside but you know make it as nice as you can oh this is what I mean when you get the corners that one behaved so nicely I don't know why <laughs> but yeah you just do this pinch in your corners smooth them out this crumpled bit down here is kind of a handle to hold it now when you wrap your clay around it you'll be able to easily remove it because you'll be able to peel off the foil. So whatever color that you want your present to be, condition about a quarter of a block of that and then roll it out on a medium like a number five setting. I've mixed up and rolled out some colors for the gift box. This is the Mai Tai, which I don't know if you can tell, I added a little bit of white to just to lighten it up. This was also a scrap of the turnip, this pinky color that I added probably four or five parts white to. This will be the ribbon. And I also rolled out some white on a very thin setting. I'll show you what I'm gonna use that for in a moment. So first I need to cut a strip that is the same width as the package. These little quilting rulers are fantastic. I have found so many uses for them, for things other than quilting. And cut one inch square. Then you can wrap it around your box. So start at a corner. If you have some corners that are cleaner than another, uh, I just tried to start at a clean corner. There you go. Smooth out that corner. If it's being stubborn, you can use like a little rolling tool, like something smooth to help roll that nicely. Then set your box down on your sheet and use your blade to cut around all four sides. And take a little time to smooth out those seams. Now you can decorate your box in lots of different ways. And this one, I just used a rubber stamp. 
I showed this uh, in a Friday Findings video recently. It was a new one and I wanted to play with it and I just used the same section on all of the sides. And then I lightly brushed it with some Interference Green Perfect Pearls. Now if you want a perfectly fitting lid like this one, you will have to bake it in three stages like I said. First we bake the base, then we'll bake the lid, then we can add the ribbon and put it all together. This one I decided instead of doing the texture, which is cute, but I had it in my mind to do polka dots. And that is why I have this sheet of clay rolled out as thinly as it will roll out on a number nine on my pasta machine. If these edges get a little ragged, which they will probably do, especially if you add a texture, go ahead and take a minute with your blade and you can just press them down. I wouldn't try to trim them now right now it's hard to do with the foil all crinkled in the way but you can smooth them out a little like this got kind of uneven and if it's really bad after you bake it you can sand it and it's really easy you just hold it upside down on a piece of sandpaper and what I'm doing with this because I'm not adding a texture I've actually got this tool and putting it down on my surface and rolling and that's doing a great job of not only smoothing out those sides but kind of crisping up those corners. Once you do have it all smoothed out you can just add on some polka dots. Then you're going to bake your box and your figurine with now the finished head and hat. The figurine bake for an hour. The box of course being so thin if you think of it you could take it out sooner and let it cool for a few minutes but it actually is easier to kind of wiggle it off of the foil and the form while it's still a little bit warm. So although this project isn't complicated uh, a lot of the steps take some time and this video is getting to be really long so I'm going to stop here and then next week I will post part two showing you how to add the rest of your sculpture and finish the box. So if you're interested in the supplies I used, you can click on the link in the upper right of the video. It's also on the lower left at the end or in the description box to go to my blog post where I always have a complete supply list and links to products. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and take a look at my Patreon page for how you can get bonus tutorials and help support these videos. Happy creating. Bye-bye.